Hi guys, it's Rick Shields down here at Quest Golf Academy here at Prairie Sports Village, and I've got my hands on this. The PXG driver, the 08 double one driver. One of the hot talking topics of this whole year is PXG brand. If you don't know anything about them, they are brand new on the market and basically have just pumped a hell of a lot of an investment into making the best equipment available. That's what they say, and they are very unapologetic about that. Now, I, this is not from PXG. I couldn't get any equipment from PXG, so I had to source it from somewhere else. Um, so I don't know loads and loads of information about this driver. I've just reviewed the irons, the 0311T and the 0311s. You can check that out on my channel already. Let's move into this. So what we get with the PXG is a very simple design with the logo, PXG, smash bang in the middle, 0811, and then it is framed by five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 tungsten weights. Six of them are silver, the rest are black. I think the silver ones are heavier. And the way I've got this set up at the moment is the two silver ones in the toe, two silver ones in the heel, two silver ones in the back. So I would presume that's neutral. What they've managed to do is strip the weight and pump it into different places of the face, the, the head. That's got to open up a whole world of adjustability options, which is a really cool idea. I do like the look of this. It looks very, and I mentioned it with the irons, it looks very modern yet industrial. It kind of looks a little bit unfinished. Almost looks like they've made a performing driver and then kind of, it almost looked a little bit like they, if they took a bit more time, I reckon they would have covered this up a bit more, almost made the technology, I don't know, maybe more hidden potentially. It has got an adjustable neck. I don't know how far up and down the loft goes. I'm sorry, I'll put it, I'll, put, I'll do a bit of research and spec out. I've got this in nine degree and I've actually got this in an Oban Kiyoshi shaft. It's a posh shaft. Um, looking behind the head, behind the golf ball, it is super stealth looking. It's a matte black head. This is no secret. A lot of the engineers that now work for Ping and a lot of uh, PXG originally came from Ping and it, and it definitely has looks of a Ping product without question. And, and I, would, I would find it hard for anyone to argue against that. It looks very Ping in its appearance on top of the head um, without the, the wings and the fins and stuff, just a simple design. No real alignment on the top. Oh, there is a tiny little subtle alignment, not much. White grooves on the face. Let's give it a rip. I've got it on GC2. You should see some nice ball flights because it's late in the evening. Oh, felt good off the head. It's a nice start, nice drive. Very nice drive. It did feel very good off the head. That's a 300 total distance, 303. Uh, what was the carrier? Probably around the 283 mark. Spin rate should have been low, 2,400. Decent numbers. Now, I haven't been fully spec for this driver, truth be told, but it's as close as we can get. That felt really nice off the head. Oh, that felt good. A little tiny fadey one, but very, very fit, good off the head. Very similar numbers. That's a nice drive again. Now, one thing I've not mentioned in this review yet, and I don't know how much it should be mentioned, is the price of this thing. <laughs> it is top dollar. It is expensive gear. PXG is expensive gear. Um, the reason behind that is apparently the owner has pumped in loads of money into making these products good, so he's kind of recouping a little bit of cost. But it's like any top, top end product, your Ferraris, your Lamborghinis, your Rolexes, they always look amazing, and they're always super desirable because they're more expensive. Does this perform like a Ferrari, like a Lamborghini? I'm not sure. Compared to other products, I'm not sure. No signs of that just yet. Two great golf shots, but I don't know if it's in the league of Ferraris. That is a bullet. Well, I don't hit golf shots that straight. 
<laughs> that is a lovely drive. I'll tell you what though, give it credit. Credit where credit is due. Three nice, three nice ball flights with that golf club. Can't help but be impressed with those, uh, those three golf shots. I'm going to hit two more. Oh, that was a bad hit. That was a real Healy horrible shot. Let's see what that does on a Healy golf shot. Oh yeah, that's going to drop way off the sky. That was a terrible golf shot. But I don't mind, I don't mind showing you because that's the whole idea of a club. You're not going to hit the middle every time. That was a real low heel shot, spun up way too much, not even carried 250 on that one. Um, we'll have a look at some numbers in a moment. I'll hit this one last one. That is massive. Big high ball flight there. In that 280 mark again, just under 300. Oh, just under 300. Very similar to driver distances I've tested recently. Let's pull up some numbers of the five averages. I think just only because it's fair, you saw that four shot that was horrendous. I might just take that one out of the averages so we can kind of get an idea because that four shot would bring the averages like ridiculously down and that was a really bad shot. You saw what it did, but let's have a look on the four shots. Okay, so I've just, I have taken that fourth shot out. It was terrible. So we've got four of the five shots that I hit. We've got 162 ball speed, which is absolutely where I would see a driver ball speed being. Launch angle 12.1, spin rate two and a half thousand. Um, it didn't really curve offline that much. Even the bad one wasn't that bad. 280 carry for a 300 total. It, it's where I see a lot of the drivers, when I hit them in this kind of, the way I'm hitting at the moment, that's about what I see normal carry distances. This, I, I really recently reviewed the tight list. That's almost the same numbers as the tight list. Um, I don't know about the price point. And quite simply, that is so personal, it's untrue. What someone would perceive as being expensive, other people may not do. So, I, so I'm not going to talk about the price that much. As a product, I love the look of it. I think the technology around the weighting system makes a lot of sense. It'd be nice to mess around with those. I'm definitely going to do some head-to-heads -head with this and other drivers on the market. I can't help but think it looks ping. I can't help but think that. Even the number at the bottom is very ping looking. Um, but PXG, absolutely all credit to them. They've come out and stamped their authority on the golf industry and the golf mar uh, manufacturer market, haven't they just? They have literally just come out and they've signed tour players. They've been loud, brash, bold, ambitious, driven. And because of that, everybody wants to test this gear. Everybody wants to hit it. They're intrigued. They're very intrigued. And hey, as a, as a brand, phew, you cannot knock that level of desire and interest for a product like this. Does it perform X amount percent better compared to the price on other drivers? I'm not sure. I don't think it does. But again, price, taking that out standpoint, this is a very, very nice performing driver. Guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please do click thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking the big circle here in the corner. Um, you get all my latest videos. Don't forget to follow me on social media. What do you think of the PXG stuff? Are you a fan? Are you not? Comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And I might have to uh, send some security guards down there because I think the comments could get quite fiery. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you soon.